Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here today. My name, uh, my name is Carlos Gonçalves. I'm the CTI leader at Banco do Brasil. And I'm excited to share with you our journey and some insights on how we're doing intelligence-based purple teaming. And we'll explore how integrating threat intel with purple teaming has significantly enhanced our security posture. And first, some information about myself. Here is a note picture of me when I wasn't in InfoSec yet. It was good times yet. No, no, no white hair yet. So who am I? I graduated in physics with uh, I, I, a postgraduate degree and an MBA. I've been working in InfoSec for the last 12 years at Banco do Brasil. I've managed the incident response team and uh, established the first red team at the bank. And right now I'm responsible for, the, for leading the CTI team at Banco do Brasil. And I'm saying Banco do Brasil, who is Banco do Brasil? It's Brazil's oldest and largest public bank. We have a worldwide presence so, you know, operating in 92 countries. We have 83 million clients out of this 28 and a half are, are active. And 93% of our digital uh, for our transactions that are occurring through digital channels. We have 110,000 internal users. And to clarify a common misconception, in Brazil, we speak Portuguese. Okay, and how are you doing threat intel? So we are using the MIS platform to facilitate the threat intel sharing. We are connected with over with more than 4,000 entities in our threat sharing network. We have a CTI platform, it's open CTI. It's, it serves as a central repository for ingesting data from a variety of sources, including threat intel feeds, open source intelligence, the incident response efforts from the, in the bank. And this platform allows us to correlate several data entities and map, map the techniques used by attackers. It, allows us, it gives us a comprehensive overview of the threat landscape. And to tell you a bit more, the data flow of the, of the threat intel process. At the, heart of, at the heart of our operations, there is the platform, as I said, OPCTI. It, 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 it integrates data from all these the sources, the, the threat sharing network, open threat feeds, sandbox analyzers, and several databases such as VirusToro, MitreAttack, uh, CVE, etc. And this data goes to our threat intel team which uses the platform to analyze and this vast amounts of information and turn them into actionable insights. And with this, they were able to identify IOCs, uh, compile threat reports, and attack, uh, do, do, do monitor the attack surface, and extract the top techniques that are being used, or that will be used for against the bank, to they will be used on our publishing campaigns. And during these campaigns, so we use another tool, it's called Vector, this tool, we are using it as, a, as, the, as the purple team campaign management tool. So to give you an example, let's analyze a ransomware, wasted locker. This ransomware will be used, was used in a simulation campaign. So this is a bit on how you use OpenCTI, the platform, to visualize and manage intelligence about specific threats. So, we have a comprehensive overview, overview of this malware. All the data sources that we are ingesting are correlated to provide a high level description. We can apply labels, visualize everything related to that entity, such as IOCs, the latest reports, which groups are using this malware, the, the attack techniques that are used, that are used to employ this malware, etc. And we, when we put it on a, on a, a, a bigger, bigger review. So this is how we are analyzing the, all this information. So this, is this visualization represents how we are connecting the dots across several reports to form a comprehensive overview of a threat. So each node here represents an entity within the platform, such as reports, IOCs, uh, techniques. And to give a, a better, over, better view, right there is the malware. And each purple node here is a report on that malware, and they are all correlated. All, all these yellow nodes are, they are the known indicators, the IOCs, but for the campaign, we don't actually, we don't care about the IOCs. We, what we care about are these nodes in, in, in green. These are the techniques that are, be used, that are known to be used 
for, in, for when employing this malware. And when you take these techniques, we put it against the matter attack matrix. We get, for, for we say, lock, you had 23 techniques, but for the simulation, you don't necessarily simulate all of these techniques, all of these 23 techniques, because no one has all these resources, and that's why the threat intel team, they evaluate which techniques should be prioritized in the, to, to, to be simulated. So right here, for that specific malware, these were the five techniques that were that the threat the threat team evaluated as the most important for the bank. Let me see, I don't, don't can't find my cursor, so anyhow. And how we are doing this prioritization? Well, we are using um, a framework called uh, Top Attack Techniques by the Matter Ingenuity Project. This this methodology it has three points: its prevalence, choke point, and actionability. Prevalence it simply tells how much a uh, specific technique is being seen on several attacks. Check choke point is um, a measurement on on specific techniques that that, that will be useful to 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 to. To, 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 know, to, to focus on a specific attack, like process injection. When you analyze a, an, an attack chain, we can see that in many attacks, there are several techniques that are, called, that are used before, calling process injection. There are many techniques go to process injection as the next step. And after process injection, they are going to several other techniques. So instead of, instead of focusing on all these techniques around process injection, if we focus on, on that specific technique that is a choke point, we might have a better chance to stop the, the full attack. And at the, at the, the, the last one is uh, actionability, is a measure of what can I do against technique. So if there isn't much, in, much thing, if there isn't, I can't do much, much about that technique, it, it receives a, a lower score. And all these all this, these three components are combined into a, a score to give us the significant the significant or the top techniques. So at the Matter Engineering website, there's a calculator to help anyone find out which techniques are so you should prioritize. But I suggest that you understand the methodology and tailor it specific to your environment to your environment. So okay, so when we take the top techniques. We, we, are, we ingest them into the, not the other two, it's vector, for the purple team campaign management. This facilitates, facilitates the tracking of the red and blue team testing activities. And with these two, we can create assessment groups that include a collection of campaigns that, that, that to simulate a specific threat. So this campaign can cover all the, that they can cover all the attack matrix from, all, all from discovery, to, to the impact, or you can make it, you can make specific tailored, tailored campaigns to assess specific specific techniques. So let's get back to the to those type of techniques that the threat intel team deemed as priority prioritized to, to simulate. So even though it doesn't cover all the tech chain, consider, considering the top techniques, the choke points, having a good detection on these techniques would give us a better chance to stop an attack that would employ that malware. So let's go deeper into one of these techniques. Like, let's go to Windows Service. When you click on that specific technique, we are presented with this screen. And it has been populated by the Threat Intel team with, inform with information on that technique. There are uh, details on how it was being used on an, at on an attack. And there are two sides. So the left-hand side is used by the red, by the red team and the right-hand side by the blue team. And the right team will offer information such as when the attack simulation started, uh, which were the targets, which one were the sources, and all this information will help the blue team navigate through thousands of logs to find out if the right team was, is being successful. And we also have fields for detailing the attack, the description, sometimes we have even, depending on the reports that you receive. We have specific like command lines, which tools are being used to exploit that specific technique. Right, zone. so, and on the right-hand side, it's used by the blue team. There's information that has been also populated by the Threat Intel team. And here the blue team will specify if that technique that the red team run 
was successful is if it was detected, if it was blocked, there was alert, there was a just a log, or there wasn't anything at all. So the, all this information, they are going to be used to assess the, cap the, the capability of detecting and mitigating each technique that was simulated by the, the red team. So let's get back to that techniques. So when we run, we run all these five techniques to simulate these specific techniques, we can get some reports. So for this campaign, for, for this campaign there, there, there was a uh, locker. There are five techniques. Our first round of, 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 this, of this malware, we came up with two, two techniques were blocked, blocked, two headlocks, it wasn't blocked, but at least two headlocks, and one of them, we were blind, we couldn't, we couldn't see anything. And we, when you go to the right side, you can, you can create, create a heat map specific to the, to the attack matrix to, to, assess, uh, to assess how is our, our defense capacity. So it goes to red, it's the worst case scenario, to green when uh, the attacker was blocked. And as we moved, we, we did it, a first round of, of, of tests it, during six months. And during that first round, we came up with this matrix, the attack matrix on, it was over 180, uh, 180 tests that were done. So this was the first, our first hit map, our first minor attack hit map testing whether that technique is being successful was, if, one, if each technique was, was used against the bank, would that, that, that attack be successful or not? So with this, we'll, knowing which techniques we, we, we must be stronger, we are able to better inform other security teams on specific actions that should be taken to improve our defenses. So from this, some results we got. So as I said, we, we were able to make targeted improvements, identified some short-term short -term actions like improved logging. We saw that there was a lot of logs that wasn't reaching the CM, the, the blue chip couldn't, couldn't see them, and some detection rules that should be improved. And also some long-term actions from specific techniques like uh, command, command and script execution. So we need, we need, a, uh, uh, we need to, to reevaluate our policies. We need to change them. And we bring the security team, the IT teams, and the business teams to, 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 to discuss this and assess the impact of any, any, any actions that will be taken by, the, by, by, by security. And we also came up with new tools that we needed that was unavailable. And Okay, this was all going great. As I said, six months, we're doing tests, but let's take a look at this, uh, the defense success rate. In this graph, you have the, in the y-axis, the defense success. And on the x-axis, we have the, the, the time. So when we saw it on the first six months, the defense success rate was getting lower. And why is that? So the red team was moving very fast. They, they were able to, they were weaponizing themselves and moving fast. And blue team was lacking behind, not because of the lack of capacity, it's because the characteristics of the defense actions are much harder, much slower to implement than simply executing tests as a red team. So what was happening was this. The threat intel team was red team playing, okay, this is fun, we're breaking a lot of stuff, so we, we find a lot of, lot of room for improvements, but the blue team was like, was, was getting drowned on the, all these reports that, were, that, were, that the red team was throwing at them. So we saw this, okay, this isn't, this is work, uh, this, uh, the, the, this, we need to improve this. So at the first hand, as I said, we'll take a more red and blue team approach where the red team was doing their their actions, the blue team was coming up later to uh, evaluate the, the, the actions done by the red team. And then on the second round, we changed the approach for a purple team approach. So we saw the defense success rates increase. And on this purple team approach, we, we had a, a, on a call, the red team, the blue team, the threat intel team, they are all on the same call, sharing screens. And the red team on moves to the next technique when the blue team has done has did whatever they could to to test techniques, so whether it be a new a new rule and uh, an improved logging or what least identify, okay, or, uh, we need something. We we can't. We are not able to do anything against this. We, we need a new tool. We need some policy changes. So only when the blue team 
is able to 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 find whatever the the red team did and make that improvement or at least okay help me i can do this by myself the red team moves to the next technique so if you compare the heat map this is, again this was for the first round red and blue when we, we change that approach to a purple team this was the 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 the, the heat map for the the attacks that were done after that that that, that change for the purple team so this is a direct result of the improvement that were identified by the by the blue team, including new tools and better visibility, and better process that was done by the defense team. So we still have a long road ahead, and as the threats are dynamic, this evaluation must be constant and retesting the techniques with new procedures. So just to give a review, comparing side by side, you can see that some techniques that were, were read, so we, we improved on that and add, also added new techniques. So, yeah, sure. So, first, I'm, I'm, there's nothing for expert situation, but does that mean should that not be a red? So, can you plug an expert situation? Uh, yeah, because on the, uh, as I said, you, you have to constantly evaluate which techniques are. are uh, but, but should, you should, you should, be, you should assess, you should test. So, on the first round, you, you, uh, for, for who, who did you hear that, so he asked if we shouldn't, we shouldn't have exfiltration on the first round. On the first round, exfiltration was not the top technique when the threat intel team evaluated all these techniques that were all the threats for the bank. The second round, it went there to, the, to be tested. So, okay, in conclusion, so we, from, we, what can we take from this? So testing is a very effective way to evaluate the security controls. And purple teaming yields better results than red and blue teaming, but uh, from experience, we see that this this approach it's slower to move. It moves slower. It gives better, better results, but it moves slower. So it's it's important to balance purple teaming with red team traditional pen tests, so you, you can have a broader a broader test, a broader a broader, broader view of your risk surface. So. Um, and bring together diverse teams is a better way to drive change through the organization. We are, when we are discussing, or when we are doing the stats, we are also bringing the risk teams, but it's another topic for another, another discussion, how we are bringing the risk teams together with the, the, together, together with the, 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 the purple team, red team, blue team, risk teams are all together. And you have to constantly evaluate the top techniques. The threat scenario is very dynamic, the attacks are very dynamic, they adapt very fast, and you have to, to, to be able to adapt, to adapt fast too. So, if you have any questions? I should please call, go ahead to the mic. So the people in, who are watching can, can hear the question. Please go ahead, go ahead. Uh, my question was, you in the first approach, um, you talked about doing, you kind of focused on one malware at a time, or, or at that time. Yeah. Uh, moving forward, do you, when you're working together in the purple team, do you focus on like one malware, like one malware strain or one actor at a time and then yeah, move yeah. on to the next one or do you do... And concurrently, how does that? The hold? first round you took on specific malware, extract, extract the techniques. Okay, these are the techniques we are simulating. For the next rounds, we are we are not looking at specific malware. We are looking right now just the the techniques. I don't care which malware are going to be used. I, I care which techniques are being used by attackers, and are these techniques going going to affect me or not? So the malware is just a, a guide to, 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 to the simulation, to the campaign, to tell a story for the campaign, but we are focusing on techniques. Does that answer your question? So it's more of a broader, like, threat landscape? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Specific actor. Yeah, yeah. The actor is just, as, as I said, it's just a guide to extract the techniques, but we are, we, are, we are evaluating the threat scenario as a whole. So. Not just the not those specific adversaries. So you had a question too. So when you're doing these like uh, purple team exercises, do you actually like target your production environment or do you kind of production? Like the, the production. Environment? Production. When we have some, uh, 
if there is a critical, critical, critical application or a critical asset, we go to another environment, but mainly on production. But do you actually, like, are you using a data expo event, like mock data, or do you actually like see if you can find data to expo within the environment? We didn't do the, we didn't do XView yet. So when I saw, sorry, they, they did XView. All right. We did, we just test, tested the, the capacity of doing, for example, can I, uh, an, an adversary establish a command and control and exfiltrate, exfiltrate data? We didn't test which data would be exfiltrated. We tested if, if that exfiltration technique would be successful, successful in, in, in whether the data was, was real or not. Just testing the technique, the exfiltration technique. Initial access, do you just tell them to like turn off wherever these actually blocking you? We don't when when we evaluate the top techniques, initial access is it doesn't come up come up as a as a prioritization as a top technique. And we also take an assumed breach approach. So we can have a, a insider with 110,000 people, so probably there's gonna be an insider sometime, so we take this approach, it's a assumed breach. But we do those, we do so, so we also do some some initial access tests when whenever needed. So, but it's not our focus. Yes. Really informative. I love the graphic, or I don't love the graphic of the blue team drawing. I don't know what the appropriate way to say it is, but I, I get it. Um, how do you manage running purple teams? Like, what what tools do you deploy, or is it just a playbook that you're kind of running and you've written down? We are learning as we go. So we are using that tool vector for managing the, the purple team. Yeah, each, 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 each team can, has access to that tool. They are able to, to fill up their specific information. And, and we, as I said, we are learning as we go. And that was the results we're getting. We are, we're not following a specific book. So. And vector free or is that something? It's open source. It's open source. It has commercial, as I say, commercial licensing for support, and but it's an open source tool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Thank you. I'll be available if anyone wants to talk. So have a wonderful day.